everybody welcome back to another video if you're new here i'm so excited you're here my name is misha i make videos all about my sustainability journey and i share with you what i find out in hopes that i can find new practices to be more eco-friendly and then you can implement them too so today is the third video in my sustainability home tour um, I already did a tour over my kitchen as well as my bathroom. So if you didn't catch those, I will link them either above or below and you can catch up and then come back to this one. So today I'm going to go over the laundry room and the bedroom. So let's go. Okay, so here we are in my not so fancy laundry room. I did already do a video about laundry detergent, so I will link that above. So I'll just go over this really quickly. The detergent video I did before was essentially a battle between two of the newer low waste detergents on the market. So I actually use both of them still. Right now I'm actually gonna go through a load and I'll show you exactly how to do it. I'm actually going to use Eco Nuts Organic Laundry Detergent Soap Nuts. So essentially this is as zero waste as you're going to get and as natural as you're going to get. But essentially, and again, I explain this in much more detail in the video, but um, essentially you get little soap berries here. Um, you use them, it said about 10 times I think you can use them. And um, they can also be used as a fabric softener. So in this case, I am gonna use them as a fabric softener because the load that I'm going to do is darker and it has a bunch of workout clothes and that kind of stuff in it. So I will need essentially double power. So the other thing that I'm going to use is drops laundry detergent pods. So as you saw in my kitchen video, I do use dishwasher detergent pods as well from this company. I obviously really like them. So um, I'm going to continue to use these. These are actually specifically for odor. I think they're lemon scented. But um, again, Drops is a really great company, explained a little bit more in the other video. So I'm gonna use both of these and get going on this. Okay, so one thing that I wanna quickly mention is that on a bunch of different websites when it comes to saving energy, creating less waste, I've definitely seen them mention that you want to do when you're doing laundry you want to do the largest load so it's a little bit wasteful to do a small load obviously if you need to that's up to you but just for sake of reducing waste that's something I wanted to know um, now that I have my laundry all the way in the dryer um, one thing that I use instead of dryer sheets because those are obviously disposable instead of using dryer sheets I have these, they're called dryer balls. They are pretty noisy, so I have to shut the door of the laundry room um, after I use them. But I just throw these in with the laundry and then that's it. They work pretty well. Obviously dryer sheets usually have a scent to them and these don't. Um, you did also maybe notice that I did use um, some fabric conditioner just because, like I said, we had a lot of workout clothes in this load, so sometimes I do use this to help with the scent, but that's one thing that I'm hoping to transition over to. I'm sure there's some DIY fabric softener that I can make that would be a little bit less wasteful than this. And the last thing I wanna mention when it comes to laundry. So there is a version of like stain remover that is zero waste. So similar to like the dish soap block that I showed you in my kitchen video, it's essentially a concentrated form of the soap. So I'm still using this up, but once this is used up, they have like a cube or a prism essentially um, that's like a stain stick. So it's a block that you just rub on the stain before you throw it into the wash and then supposedly it helps get the stain out. So I haven't used one of those before, but once I switch over, I'll obviously keep you updated on that. That's one other thing that can make you a little less wasteful. There's two other things that I wanna mention while I'm in the laundry room. Now, this type of equipment might be in a different area in your house, but in my house, my air filter system is in the laundry room. So one thing that we do use is just regular old um, air filters. So unfortunately, with the times right now, we were kind of in a pinch for time. So I just got some regular air filters. 
Um, but one thing that I wanted to mention while these were here is that you can get reusable air filters. They do sell like metal air filters so that when there's enough dust or what have you in it and you want to clean it out, you essentially just spray it out or you soak it or what have you. So that's super nice. And honestly, some of them say that there's like a lifetime, you can use them for a lifetime. So that's obviously awesome. I've also seen other ones that have like a solid frame, so either a plastic or a steel frame. And then the inside is like some type of foam or different kind of material that you can take out and wash that way. So again, just thinking about when you use up one thing to replace it with something that's a little bit more sustainable. I hope to replace that soon. So once we use this up, then I will definitely be looking into that option. But if you're already on the end of the life of yours, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, I lied, so I have two more now. So cleaning supplies. Um, sometimes we keep some down here, sometimes we keep some upstairs, but I wanted to mention this before I forgot to mention it in the whole house tour, but we ran out of Windex, so I decided to make my own. So I just looked up a quick DIY recipe. This is obviously gonna take you a teeny bit of time, but it's so worth it if it saves you that amount of time to go to the store. And also the ingredients in this, I used white vinegar, isopropyl alcohol, and a few essential oils with some water, and that was it. And actually this works really, really well. So I know there's a lot of probably different brands out there that are natural, um, hopefully in glass or sustainable bottles. Um, I will be looking into that as I, of course, use up the stuff that I already have. But I just wanted to mention that I do try to use DIY type stuff because obviously if you're using up what you already have, that's as low waste as you can get. And sometimes they're better than the real thing. All right, so the last thing I wanna mention for the laundry room in general um, is a drying rack. So now that it's summer where I'm from, you can actually, obviously if you have a clothesline, you can hang up clothes that way, which is gonna be way more sustainable than using your dryer and probably quite a bit cheaper too. If you have things that don't really need to go into the dryer, you can always use a drying rack and that'll cut down on the time that you're using the dryer, um, but it'll cut down energy as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, now we're in the bedroom. So I'm gonna go over three different areas. We're gonna talk about clothing and sustainability in that sense. And then we're gonna talk about girl stuff and then we're gonna talk about guy stuff. So when it comes to clothing, I've done a haul from ThreadUp before, but you can obviously get your clothes at any secondhand store. I try to do that as much as possible. I am a sucker for clearance, so I'm, I'm working on it. One thing I will say is that I am adopting a minimalist type mindset moving forward. So what that means to me is that right now, I, I've gotten rid of quite a few things like within the last year or so, but I'm still hanging on to some clothing in hopes that I can use it in the future or hoping that I can get a second use out of it. So if it still fits, I probably still have it in my closet, but as long as you're attempting to get a secondhand option first, then looking for something newer that's a little bit more sustainable, uh, sustainable materials and that kind of stuff, then I think you're in good shape. So most of what you see here is, actually I won't say most of it because I'm still obviously very new to this lifestyle. So I would say probably um, about a quarter or a third of this is secondhand. So the other half of it is definitely bought on clearance or at deep discount. And if you're like my husband, you still have clothes from eighth grade. So whatever works for you, a little bit more sustainability goes a long way. And I will leave a coupon code to thread up in the description box below. We're gonna get extra personal today. So I did mention in my bathroom haul that I use a menstrual cup. Now, um, there are also another few options if you're not comfortable doing that or if you just want another option. I have a few options here. So you can obviously get some period underwear, which I have here. Um, these have been pretty great. One thing is, is if you're not used to being constricted, um, these are a little bit tighter. So obviously to help keep everything in there. And these are a little bit more expensive, but obviously they last a really long time and they serve a very necessary purpose. So um, the only, the other thing that you can use is sustainable pads or what have you. Um, this is <laughs> what my husband refers to as my diaper. Um, 
you gotta remember what you got. So in these cases, you can obviously use this for lighter days. And then if you're feeling like you wanna be extra secure, this is something that you can use for those days as well. All right, so we're gonna talk about sex. My husband and I were talking about how I was going to approach this part of the video. And lucky for you, I'm already awkward. So this will just be like a normal conversation. So what I wanted to mention was uh, condoms. So this condom is by the brand Sustain Natural. Since we've gotten these, um, when I was researching this company to make sure that I provide you with the best information possible, they have quite a few different sustainable products, so you can definitely check them out. They also have like a menstrual cup, they have organic tampons. So a lot of their stuff is fair trade, which of course, if you're gonna have to use something that isn't necessarily like zero waste, you wanna make sure that you're supporting a good company. Um, one thing that I didn't find that was really funny is when I was looking through the products, um, I was laughing to myself about how fragile masculinity is because there is only two sizes and they are large and extra large. But as I was talking to my husband about it, um, I was thinking it's probably not very good marketing to have a small size kind of, I guess. So whatever. Anyways, um, these work just fine if you're obviously trying to protect yourself or not get pregnant or what have you. So just another one of those things that you can think about once you've used up one thing is trying to find another sustainable version of another, so. And while we're on the topic of sex, they also actually make biodegradable and recyclable vibrators. So again, just one of those things that there's always another more sustainable option of. All right, that's the end of today's tour. So you saw everything that I use in my laundry room that's sustainable and then also everything in my bedroom so I have probably just one more video that I'll show you next week that covers a different area of my house so I hope to see you then thanks for watching if you haven't already subscribed please do so and leave me a thumbs up and I'll see you next week bye